Okay, so Adi will give us the his second lecture now. Adi. So uh, hi everyone, nice to see you again. Um, so uh, you may remember my uh, the outline of of my talks. So I think I gave you the short advertisement. Did I did I mention the course we were planning we were doing? Probably I did. Um, and, and we talked also about uh, non-abelian states of matter and about, uh, uh, in general, and about phase-controlled one-dimensional topological <laughs> superconductors. What I'd like to do now is to um, uh, talk about the combination of superconductivity and the fraction quantum wall effects, and how we use that combination to uh, create power fermions, and what, what are power fermions anyway. Uh, now, we, we talked a lot here about superconductivity, uh, and at least in the two days I'm here, uh, there was very little uh, uh, fraction quantum Hall effect. So I'll, I'll give a, you know, a very, very quick uh, um, review of the fraction quantum Hall effect, with a, and basically I'll tell you there are two things you need to keep in mind, so I'll mention those. Uh, anyway, that, that's a... a there are, there are many works on the subject. I've been involved in one with uh, uh, Nathaniel Linda, uh, Erzberg, and Gillerfell. Uh, there were works by Barke uh, Mason Barkeshli and Shaolang Chi, and uh, by David Clark, Hill Stengel, and, and Jason, uh, and by uh, um, Meng Cheng and uh, Abdul Fazar uh, And there were actually even uh, uh, works later on. Uh, and there, there are also some experimental developments which I'll mention. To start with, you know, the, the quantum Hall effect is a Hall effect, two-dimensional system. Current, currents are flowing uh, uh, from left to right here. There's a magnetic field parallel to the plane, and therefore the whole, there's a whole voltage developing. Classically, the whole voltage is there to cancel the Lorentz force. The Lorentz force is linear in magnetic field, and therefore you expect the whole resistivity to be linear in magnetic field. <laughs> as well, and indeed it was linear and magnetic field for the entire second half of the 19th century and for a large part of uh, the 20th century. But then uh, uh, the quantum Hall effect was, was discovered and all those states in which the, uh, there's an energy gap, so there is no uh, longitudinal resistivity or conductivity whatsoever, so there's no dissipation, that the, the, the green line here is uh, the longitudinal conductivity and resistivity, and together with that, the whole conductivity and resistivity are perfectly quantized to an unbelievable level, level of precision uh, of something like one part in 10 to the 9 or 10 to the 10. Uh, now, uh, the quantization is in units of h over e squared, and if nu is uh, an integer, it's called a, a, a if the, if the, so the, uh, whole resistivity is one of a new age over e squared. If uh, new is an integer, it's called the integer quantum Hall effect. If new is a fraction, uh, it's called the fraction quantum Hall effect. Uh, usually, the, f uh, the fraction is usually written as p over q, as q and q is uh, frequently odd, but not always. Sometimes it's even. There are, there are no other possibilities. Uh, now, out of this, there are two things you need to remember. Uh, about the fraction quantum Hall effect, and if uh, um, those are missing, uh, uh, tell me, and I'll, I'll uh, give you a little bit of uh, um, background on this. Uh, uh, one is that the bulk of the system is gapped, and there are chiral modes going along the edge. In this case, uh, you see this one is moving to the right, this, mo this one is moving to the left. Sometimes there are edges moving uh, counter counter-propagating to one another on the same edge. We'll see more about the edge uh, later, but in any case, uh, the bulk is gapped. Uh, gapless uh, occurs, uh, gaplessness occurs only on the edges. Second is that the fraction quantum Hall effect host, uh, uh, hosts a, a quasi-particle with a fractional charge. Now, this is not um, a, a big, I, I, you know, this is a logical consequence of the fraction quantum Hall effect. Basically, you cannot um, uh, have a fraction quantum Hall effect and, and keep sacred uh, uh, rules of physics like gauge invariance, adiabatic theorem, stuff like that, 
you cannot have those together uh, without concluding that there are excitations which carry localized lumps of charges which are fractional and live forever, also known as fractionally charged quasi-particles. So this is its a logical consequence. Uh, and I won't get into uh, uh, this derivation just because of lack of time, but you can see it in a uh, discourse that I mentioned. Uh, so, so those are the two things you need to remember now. Now, um, uh, there are non-abelian fractional quantum whole states, and we will uh, uh, talk about them uh, towards the end of the hour. But uh, what uh, uh, I'd like to, to say, you know, the, a two-dimensional system in a magnetic field is a system that looks for the cheapest offer or to th for the lowest energy ground state. And it, it gets many offers. You know, it can form a, a Fermi liquid, it can form a billion quantum wall state, it can form a charge density wave, and, and depending on parameters, the system chooses the one that uh, costs uh, least amount of energy. The work I'm going to talk about in the first half of this, uh, or in the first uh, part of this uh, hour, uh, comes from the idea of engineering a non-abelian state. What, what do I mean by engineering a non-abelian state? Uh, what I mean is we'd like to make the electrons an offer they cannot refuse. And I hope you uh, know the uh, intellectual inspiration for this. Uh, and also the meaning of the PCB uh, acronym. Uh, so, so that's what we'd like to do. How are we going to do that? So, so the, main, the, the first thing, and maybe the most important thing in, in this, is to have two counter-propagating edge states, wi each of which borders a fractional quantum whole state. So for example, you can, you can think about a bilayer with electrons on one layer and holes on the other layer. You know, take a, two graphene sheets, well separated from one another, not a bilayer in the sense that there's tunneling between them, but you know, separate them by HBN of uh, a couple of layers so that there's no tunneling of electrons between in the bulk, uh, and, and put one of the gate one of them to have electrons at some density, gate the other one to have holes at the same density, opposite, char opposite charge, of course, and now put a magnetic field in such a way that you get one third here and minus one third here. For, for to, to be sort of general, it's written here one over M, but I will probably uh, get confused and say one third occasionally. This is the the, the main uh, uh, case. Now, uh, so, so we have two uh, uh, edge modes and they move in opposite directions. So you see, one of them is moving to the right, this is the energy versus momentum. The other one is moving to the left. What we'd like to do is we'd like to g uh, couple them in such a way that the gap will open here at the crossing point. And there are two ways to do that. And that's something we, we uh, became very familiar from, uh, old from the works of uh, Liang Fu and Charlie uh, Kane, uh, there are two ways to, to carry out uh, such a gapping. What they were uh, thinking about was a helical state on the surface of uh, 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 topology, or, or, or at the edge of a 2 DTI. Uh, so, th so you can gap those, uh, these, these modes either by backscattering, meaning transferring an electron from one edge to the other, or by uh, coupling to a superconductor, in which case, uh, you don't transfer an electron from one edge to the other. You take an electron from one edge, you add to it another electron from another edge, you form a Cooper pair, and that Cooper pair goes to oblivion to the superconductor. Or, or of course, the, the, other, the, other way around. the other way around. You take a Cooper pair from the superconductor and uh, put one electron here, the other electron there. Overall, each of these two procedures will open a gap here. Uh, so, so uh, uh, there will be a gap in both cases, but it will be a very different type of a gap. If you make a, if you introduce backscattering, you have a back, uh, you have a, a gap here, and you form an insulator. If you introduce superconductivity, you have a gap here, and you form a superconductor. And those two are very different from one another, of course. Ah, uh, so, so, so. Uh, uh, what, what is it that we, 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 are, we are going to do? So here the, uh, our bilayer is looked at from above and, uh, and it has a circular shape. And those are the two counter-propagating edge modes. 
uh, and you know, imagine one of them having one spin direction, the other one having an opposite spin direction. In any case, what we are going to do now uh, is we are going to introduce these gapping mechanisms uh, uh, along the circumference. So you know, the edge modes uh, before cu before uh, coupling them form a, a helical a lattinger liquid with a, a which can be described in terms of uh, two uh, bosonic uh, fields, phi and theta, uh, which do not commute with one another. And uh, 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 in terms of uh, physical meaning, the derivative of one is the charge and the derivative of the other is the current. And now what we're going to do is we're going to couple those two edge modes in one of the two possible ways that I mentioned, either superconductivity or backscattering. And we're going to do it in an alterna uh, alternating way. Uh, so the, uh, the, the gray things will uh, uh, be uh, superconductors and the red things will be uh, insulators, okay? Now, how does it look? Uh, uh, coupling, you know, t uh, transferring an electron from one edge to the other looks like a cosine term. Uh, the, 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 the superconductor uh, looks like cosine 2m phi and the 2m comes out of the fact that what you tunnel are only electrons. You cannot tunnel a fractional charged quasi-particle out of the layer in which it lives. What, what, can, ta what can go out of the plane uh, from one plane to the other is only a, a, an electron. Uh, and that's why the, the operator is cosine 2m phi, and the other one is cos cosine 2m theta. And uh, uh, this one uh, exists only in the gray regions. This one exists only in the, in, in the red regions. Uh, now, uh, you see that if you look only here, for example, where you have only one cosine, and I if you take this, a prefactor to be very, very large, this cosine will gap the, the gapless spectrum of the, of the uh, Lattinger liquid because it will pin the, the value of phi to a, a value at which the cosine has a minimum. But there's, uh, there are two M such values. So there are multiple values uh, in which uh, the uh, Hamiltonian of this guy will be uh, will get the min uh, uh, will be in a minimum. There are several degenerate minima. That's what we want, right, for non-abelian states. We want several degenerate ground states. So here's how they start emerging. Now you can say, well, okay, here I'm going to pin phi to its uh, to a minimum value of cosine two m phi, and maybe here I'll pin theta to a value to a minimum value of cosine two m theta. That's not going to work because theta and phi cannot be uh, uh, simultaneously defined because they do not commute with one another. So, so uh, uh, you'll have to choose whether you uh, minimize, the, uh, uh, whether you pin the values of phi here, here, and here, or you pin the value of theta here, here, and here. Uh, but in any case, once you decide whether you want to pin phi or theta, and you uh, write down the various possible sets of values, you will get a set of degenerate ground states. Are they orbital star or spin wall states? Excuse me? Orbital spin wall states or So, you know, you have a, 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 a two layers. One has nu equals one third, the other one a, has equals minus one third. What do you call the combined uh, system? Its total whole conductivity is zero. Right, because it's it just two parallel plates, one third minus one third. And now we couple them at the edges. So the total or conductivity of the combined system is zero. So in that sense, you can call it a fractional spin hole state. But I told you the recipe how you build them. Okay, yeah. But, but uh, uh, did I answer the question? Because you, <laughs> you look suspicious. Uh, <laughs> or suspecting. Uh, uh, Say it again? Uh, answered. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, up to this point, how important it is that both of the individual layers are, are fractional? What can they be? Because you said the total thing is zero anyway, and as long as energy is required, it's just two pile of states. Does it matter what pile of states? Yes. Are? Yes. We want the the. Um, you, you, you technically you see it here. 
we want this 2m phi, right? So, uh, uh, which means that the electron is e to the i m phi, which means that there's another operator that's e to the i phi, and that's the quasi-particle. So, if, if, if m is 1, maybe that's the way to answer it. If m is 1, which is the integer quantum wave effect, you are not going to get the power fermions I'm going to talk about. You will get my one fermions, and, and we'll see that, okay? Yes, yes, we'll, we'll talk about that, yes, okay. Uh, uh, other questions? So, so before uh, uh, um, get, uh, getting to that, let me uh, say a few, a few things about this system and the physical meaning of, of these degeneracies. First of all, you can solve the, the, uh, this Hamiltonian. It's not as easy as, uh, as we are used to, um, you know, as, as what uh, Jason uh, showed uh, yesterday, because it's not a quadratic Hamiltonian. You know, uh, nothing is quadratic here anymore. It's bosonized. Um, but you can. A and, and when you solve, what you find is that at the interfaces, you see this interface, this interface, at any interface between uh, superconducting coupling and insulating coupling or backscattering coupling, at any interface, there's a zero mode, which which is what you'd find, you know, what you'd expect if you were uh, gapping a, a, a helical uh, set of modes. Uh, you'd expect a zero mode, and that zero mode would be a Majorana operator. Now, uh, what what do I mean when I say it's a Majorana oper uh, uh, operator? I mean that if you square it, you get one. I mean that they anti-commute with one another, and so on and so forth. Now here you would get a zero mode, uh, but it will not be a Majorana operator. How do you know that it's not a Majorana operator? First of all, it's not called gamma. It's called chi. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> a very big difference. But, but there are other differences as well. You square it and you don't get one. You raise it to the power 2m and you do get one. Not only that, you take two of them and you uh, um, interchange the positions, you know, you, you you look at chi 1, chi 5, and compare it to chi 5, chi 1, the difference is not a, a minus sign. The difference is a phase factor. And it's a phase factor that's e to the uh, i pi over m. Okay, so, so those are different uh, zero uh, energy operators, uh, but they, they are localized near the interface, just as, uh, as the Majorana operators would be. They commute with the Hamiltonian, and they take the system from one ground state to another in exactly the same way that applying pairs of Majoranas uh, on a, a ground states in, in, in 1D topological superconductors take the system from one ground state to another. Okay? Now, now uh, um, they, 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 they don't square to one, as, as, as I said. Um, and uh, therefore, there's a difference between chi and chi dagger. Uh, unlike the, the case of Majorana's where gamma and gamma dagger were the same. So, so we have, all, we have this basically the same story of uh, a 1D topological superconductivity up to the fact that the degeneracy is different. How do we understand the physics of that degeneracy? Well, there's a simple way to understand it. So, so let's look here. So here we, we gapped, uh, uh, I think I'm using even the same color code as before, or maybe not. Uh, one mechanism was red, uh, and the other one is, bl is blue, I is a yellow, excuse me. Uh, and let's imagine that the, the red ones are the superconductors, and the yellow ones are the insulators, okay? Uh, now, let's think at, at you know, life from the point of view of this uh, red superconducting region. So, 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 so it's, it's superconducting. It's coupled, it's coupled to a big superconductor. You know, it's, the superconductivity always takes place with proximity coupling to a big superconductor. So, so it's a region of two counter-propagating uh, fractional quantum hole edge modes which are gapped by superconductivity. On every side of that, uh, of that uh, uh, segment, there, there's an insulator. You know? On this side, it's the vacuum. 
On this side, it's the vacuum. On this side, on the two edges, those are regions where the gapping made the system insulating. And, and, and in, the, in here, it's a quantum hole insulator. It has, you know, charge cannot flow freely through it because it has zero longitudinal conductivity. So this superconducting region, it's only a, a possibilities of exchanging charges is, is with the big superconductor with which it can uh, exchange Cooper pairs. But other than that, it cannot exchange charge. So it's like a quantum dot. It's like a quantum dot that's coupled to a superconductor. So it can, its charge is quantized only modulo two because it can exchange Cooper pairs with the quantum dot. But other than, well, excuse me, with the big superconductor. But other than that, it's a quantum dot that's isolated, that's surrounded by, uh, by uh, insulators. So its charge should be quantized. It should be quantized modulo two, and, the, and, and the, it should be quantized in the elementary charge unit that the system has. And that elementary charge unit is one over M. So the charge is quantized modulo two in units of one over M. So it can take the values of zero, one over M, two over M, ta ta ta, up to two M minus one over M. Meaning there are two M possible values for the charge. Now those, uh, so, 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 you basically. That's what I said. It, the, the, it, it, it's quantized to uh, uh, modulo 2e over m. But it's not quantized to in units of uh, 2e because this uh, superconducting region can get a one third, if m is three, can get a one third quasi particle from that bulk. In principle, you know, charges of one over m can, can flow in and out here. So the, the, the charge is, is quantized in units of one over m, one e over m, I'm putting it to one. One over m, but modulo a, a group of power. Okay, is, the, is this point clear? Now, uh, you'd expect the, you know, in a quantum dot usually, the charge is quantized in units in units of one electron, but the charge also depends on the, the excuse me, the energy depends on the charge. Here there is no dependence on the uh, on the charge because basically the the big superconductor screens completely the charging energy. So so we uh, uh, the the energy for each of the possible uh, values is the same, and therefore you see here here I put uh, m equals three. Uh, so so so. For m equals three, which is the you know the most prominent fraction quantum hole effect observed, uh, there would be six possible values of the charge, and the degeneracy would be six to the power n minus one. Now, if this was nu equals one, so the integer quantum hole effect, we would have two to the power n minus one, and that is uh, the Majorana case. Okay, so so basically, you see what we have here is the product of Majorana multiplied by the inverse of one third by three. Okay, is this clear? Now, uh, so as I said, for m equals one, the, uh, the Fouquet and Majorana operator, and uh, uh, what it shows is that the charge is quantized in units of one electron modulo two, meaning the do each dot can be either even or odd. Uh, now, can we uh, um, carry out um, Unitary transformation. First, before saying that, let me say that the degeneracy is topological. There is no way you can remove it by doing a, a local operation somewhere in the segment. You need to work on the entire segment uh, in order to, let's say, in order to measure what's the charge, uh, and by measuring to uh, remove the degeneracy. Uh, so, so, so it's a, it's topologically protected just as uh, in one-dimensional. Uh, topological superconductors on which we talked so much. Uh, how can we put in dynamics into this system? How can we move the system from one, uh, one uh, state to another? So given that we know that the states are characterized by how much charge each superconducting segment has, it is clear that in order to move the system from one ground state to another, we need to know how to transfer fractional charges from one superconducting segment to the other. And the way to do that is by tunneling. That's the only way. Uh, 
uh, in, in two dimensions, it's, it's the way we would uh, carry out unitary transformations would be by interchanging, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later, uh, by interchanging uh, quasi-particles in the plane. But when you live in, in one dimension, interchanging is, uh, is, is hard to do. And I uh, actually have an example here. Uh, if you have a very narrow street uh, and, and there are parking cars all along, you cannot interchange those two if the street is not wide enough, right? And uh, what, do you, what do you do in this case? Your only way is tunneling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe I should say I, li I live in Tel Aviv and parking is a very uh, hard problem to solve. <laughs> And <laughs> usually, once you you pick, it, once you have a, a spot, you just don't move. <laughs> uh, so, so, so this is a, a, um, a, a, this is how we would uh, uh, carry out unitary transformations. It is by coupling tunnel coupling this point to this point, or this point to this point, and so on and so forth. And there's a protocol for that, uh, but. Uh, uh, but I won't get into details uh, because there's something else I want to say that's uh, really important. So I, I won't get, get into details. In any case, uh, uh, the, 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 the principle I will tell you, you are allowed to introduce any tunnel couplings in the world that you want as a theorist, right? I'm not doing this. I'm just a, 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 a turning on and off cu a tunnel coupling terms. But the crucial point is to keep the degeneracy of the ground state fixed all along the process. You shouldn't change the degeneracy because once you do, uh, you don't have topological protection anymore. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, but if you do keep the degeneracy, the unitary transformation has this non-abelian berry phase structure. It's the time-ordered product of the exponent of i uh, uh, times the integral of what looks like a Berry connection, and it is indeed a Berry connection, but it is a matrix. It's not a, 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 it's not a, a number as it is when you have a, no a degeneracy of the ground state. Um, once you do the, 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 uh, the calculation, you find that the unitary transformation, if you interchange this uh, zero mode, I'm not sure I said, they are called power fermions. Uh, for, for, for whatever reason. Um, the other ones are called marijuana fermions, and the reason is uh, maybe a little bit clearer, but uh, I don't think power was a person. Uh, <laughs> they are called power fermions. Uh, so if you interchange this power fermion with this one, the unitary unit transformation will be e to the i pi m over 2 times q squared, where q is the operator that uh, quantifies how much charge this one has modulo uh, a Cooper pair. So, so uh, now, if you interchange this one with this one, instead of Q here, you will get the uh, uh, conjugate operator that, uh, that occurs here, and that will make the, the transformations non-abelian. Now, I don't know if anyone uh, mentioned this. Maybe Jason is there. I'm not sure. Uh, when you think about topological quantum computation, it's a, an important question whether the uh, set of operations you can do uh, is, is uh, sufficiently diverse to create a universal set of uh, quantum gates. The answer is negative for myonas, and it's slightly less negative uh, for, for uh, uh, power fermions, but it's still negative. Um, now, how to, go, how to change it into positive is a, is a very interesting subject. I don't think I'll... I'll manage to say something about it, but it, it's, it, it is possible. It's, it just takes more complicated stuff. Anyway, that's the idea of, uh, of power fermions. You start from counter-propagating fractional quantum all edges, and you want to either make them gap by backscattering or make them gap by superconductivity. Now, it's very easy to make them gap by backscattering. You just bring them very close to one another. They'll do the job. Uh, making them coupled by superconductivity is much harder, and I explained why in the, in the 1D topological superconducting case, superconductivity and magnetic fields don't like one another, and fractional quantum Hall effect requires a, a very strong magnetic field. 
Someone here mentioned the name churn, uh, the, the, the concept of a churn uh, state uh, before. Uh, that is a very promising direction. This is the idea of seeing a fraction quantum whole state with no, super con with no magnetic field at all. That's not realized as of now. Uh, the minimum value I'm aware of is still a, a couple of Teslas. Uh, so so, so uh, uh, that's a future direction. But can you make superconductivity and magnetic field live with one another? The answer is yes, and there is uh, now one experiment from uh, uh, Philip uh, Kim's uh, group at Harvard uh, that couples the fraction quantum Hall effect to a superconductor. And what you see here is the, uh, it's graphene, it's the uh, nucleus uh, one third, and this is a superconducting finger. Uh, and on one side, it has uh, an edge state going to the left. On the other side, it has an edge state going to the right. And the question is, can superconductivity couple those, uh, excuse me, two edges? Now, what you see here is a, a temperature, a several filling factors. I, I'm not sure how, ma how well you see uh, the numbers and so on. I, I'll tell you what, uh, what the main thing is, not to mention that the colors here. I'm kind of bad. Why does it work better? Or, I mean, the field is even higher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, y y you, you jump to this line. L let me go there in my own <laughs> speed. I'll get there, yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to answer this. Uh, so so, so, so uh, what I want to say is uh, what you see on the y-axis is the probability that while the electron was moving along one edge, uh, it was uh, sort of caught by the superconductor together with an electron from the other edge, and uh, was taken to form uh, a Cooper pair, thus leaving a, a, a hole in the other side. So uh, I'll, I'll say more, I'll explain that uh, maybe a little bit with a plot uh, on the next slide. But in any case, what I want to say is there is, this, there is here a coupling of fraction quantum whole states to superconductivity. In that sense, it's amazing. But what you see here on the y-axis is the probability for such a process to happen, for the formation of a Cooper pair to happen. Uh, this is what they measured, uh, and uh, uh, I'll explain how. And, and you see here uh, uh, it's a 3% probability. 3%, as you probably agree, is much smaller than 100%. Uh, that's the, the, the sort of uh, bad news. But the good news, the very good news, is that this is much better by about factor, whatever, four, uh, compared to new course one. So it's easier to do this for the fraction quantum Hall effect than for the integer quantum Hall effect. Yes. Uh, you know, I see you, you're raising your hand. I, I think, oh, my time. <laughs> no, the, the, the Cooper pairs that go to the superconductor, this is niobium something or other, niobium nitride, uh, the, uh, what entered there are Cooper pairs, are electrons. Anything that goes out of the f fraction quantum Hall effect is electrons. Uh, other questions? So, so just to uh, you know, focus, uh, uh, zoom on on the picture on the left, uh, and draw it in my own drawing. Uh, this is the finger, and and the electron uh, moves to the left on the upper edge and to the right on the lower edge. And this, at the end of the finger, of course, it just uh, uh, goes around. A and uh, what I'm doing here schematically is what can happen to that electron as it moves uh, along the, the superconducting figure. So this is the superconductor. So there are several possibilities. You know, it can, it can tunnel from the, it can ignore the superconductor altogether and just tunnel through the graphene uh, as an electron. So an electron leaving the uh, left movers and the uh, uh, defecting to the right movers. You know, in, in Israel where I come from, uh, uh, we are in an uh, election uh, season now, as, as always. Uh, so uh, uh, defecting from the left to the right is a phenomenon we are familiar with. Uh, <laughs> there's another uh, possibility uh, from which w with which we are less familiar. Uh, well, maybe. Uh, uh, which is uh, what we are after. It's one electron from the left movers and one electron from the right movers combined together to go into the superconductor. And then there are other possibilities. You know, the, as I said, at the end of the finger, you just, in a trivial way, go, go from being left, uh, left mover to right mover. 
But there are also other possibilities. Since the superconductor has vortices in it, and since the vortices, as we uh, heard from Vidya, uh, have a normal state in their cores, uh, the, the, the uh, electrons, single electrons, can also tunnel to the superconductor and disappear there as normal charges without, without leaving a hole behind. So all this happens. Now, the, the crucial point is, you know, the one we're after, let's understand what happens with this one. The electrons that come here, the, here there's a stream of electrons. Uh, a, and there's a voltage. If you measure the voltage on that edge, it tells you how many electrons are flowing because it's the chemical potential of the edge. Now, these processes make you, A, lose electrons, and B, gain holes. So what's coming out here are holes, and therefore you get a voltage there that's of opposite sign compared to the voltage that comes in. So if this, is, uh, if this was the only process available, you know, in the ideal limit, you would get some voltage here of incoming electrons and minus the same voltage of outgoing holes. Uh, if, if, if that's the only thing that happened, which, which means the, all the electrons that's coming, that are coming from here would leak and disappear somewhere, you would get zero voltage here. And if that's the only thing that happens, you would get all the electrons that come in here would go out as electrons here, so the same voltage will be measured. This is an ideal quantum voltage. So you see the voltage can go, the voltage at the, out, at the output can go, start from the voltage at the input and go down all the way to minus that voltage. Now you understand the percentage uh, y-axis. What, what they get in the experiment is minus 3%. Uh, this voltage is minus 3% of this one. So the combination of all processes gave a majority of minus 3% to, uh, uh, to, to, to this, uh, uh, if you want the cross and the reflection, is, is the jargon term for this process. Now, uh, uh, okay, the, uh, 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 there was the, the question before uh, of why uh, the fraction quantum wall effect works better, and that's what I'd like to uh, single out here. The process of tunneling a single electron from a fraction quantum wall edge is uh, harder because of what, what can be uh, phrased as an orthogonality catastrophe. It's harder, there's a, 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 a smaller matrix element for, for a electron tunneling into a fraction quantum wall effect as compared to electron tunneling into an integer quantum wall effect. And in many, many cases, this works sort of against us. In this case, it works exa exactly in the direction that we want. So, so that's something I, I analyzed with a few of my uh, uh, colleagues and friends. And, uh, 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 and actually, Evgeny is here, is now uh, expanding this analysis uh, even further. No, no, 3% is an experimental uh, statement. Right. It seems like that you're, you have three sources here, right? So you have to have two free parameters in one equation. Ah, no, you're saying can I, can I phrase a theory that will give me minus 3%? I have so many free parameters, any number of percents you want, I'll, I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You cannot get minus without having some coupling to superconductivity. Okay. But that, that, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it could be, you know, minus 3% can come out of, uh, that's going to be hard, 51.5% uh, of cases of uh, under every cost under every reflection and 485 don't check me. Uh, 48.5 of uh, just backscattering. Yeah. Or it can come out of uh, whatever percent for uh, just handling of single electron, electrons to vortices. And, but there must be some superconductivity there. Otherwise, it won't be negative. Okay? Uh, and we, we, we have no way to quantitatively separate between. Uh, so, so, so that's where we are experimentally. It's, it's a... a uh, it's the first experiment, and, and, and it's a very long way until 
we will be able to, until we'll get to with power fermions to where we are with uh, uh, myoana fermions. But, but I, I think still it's uh, an interesting idea that uh, I wanted you to be aware of. Now, uh, I want, to, uh, want also to connect this to, to my first talk. Yes. To get the negative, uh, well, if you get a 97% tunneling to the uh, uh, to the vortices, which I admit right. is well, at least compared to like the Kessler. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so yes. Is there a reason here why? Uh, because I mean, the samples are actually like quite rough. They add to the to the to So could it be a reason why? Uh, So, so uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, believe uh, the normalization group uh, procedures in this case, and, and RG, you know, sometimes with edge states, sometimes works better, sometimes not so well. But uh, the analysis we did was an RG analysis. Then you can, uh, and, and then there are parameters in this RG analysis, in particular the Latinger parameters of the edges make a big difference. Then we can find, a, in fact, we can find three regions. We can find a region where uh, we don't manage to uh, make this thing superconducting. We can find the region where we manage to make it superconducting, but still we don't have power fermions. And then we can, and, and then a region, the holy grail, where it's gapped and, and there are power fermions. Uh, so that depends on parameters of the RG. And um, we don't know what happens in a real sample. Okay. Uh, other questions? Oh, okay. So, so, so uh, uh, I, I'd like to connect it. You know, much of the of our discussions here was about one-dimensional topological uh, 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 superconductivity. Um, in fact, even Vidya was talking about a three-dimensional system. Ended up looking at the helical one-dimensional mode. So there's. A, a lot of uh, one-dimensionality in the field. Can can we make this one-dimensional? Uh, so so actually, there's a, a from if you think about this from a one-dimensional viewpoint, uh, you 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 can find that there won't be any fraction quantum Hall effect in one dimension. There won't be anyons in one dimension. And in fact, the only kind of non-trivial, non-abelian excitation that exists in one dimensional is a Majorana mode. A, a, and that's something that was realized uh, by Frank Polman, Erez Berg, and Ari Turner. And, and uh, actually also in somewhat different way by Kitaev and Fitkovsky. Uh, but I'd like to try and cheat a, and, and to realize uh, these power fermions uh, in, in, in one dimension. So how am I going to do that? I'm taking the two-dimensional system that you saw before uh, and I'm, I'm making it instead of a disk. I'm, I'm drawing a hole here. Uh, I'm drilling a hole here. So, so, so now this is an annulus, uh, but still it's two-dimensional, uh, and it has all these uh, power fermions modes uh, along uh, the, the uh, external edge and along the internal edge, and uh, the color code changed again. But the, the red are, are uh, superconductors, and the nothing are uh, insulators. Uh, our backscattered regions, okay? Uh, now, now, what I'm going to do, uh, as I said, is cheating. I'm going to try and make this uh, yellow, uh, this uh, green region narrower and narrower. Okay, until it, uh, I'll make it uh, thinner and thinner until it will become one dimensional. But I'm going to do it, here's a, a, you know, a zoom on a certain region. So I'm going to make the green thing thinner and thinner, but in such a way that the uh, non abelian defects are uh, kept very far away from one another. You see, I can, I, I can make this as an arrow as one micron and keep this as distant as uh, whatever, 15 centimeters. Okay? Uh, so, so there won't be any tunneling matrix element between this and that. So, I, so the, the, the ground state degeneracy won't be uh, removed 
uh, if there's no tunneling, supposedly, and, uh, and it will become one-dimensional. So can I cheat? Uh, 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 can I uh, make this work uh, uh, wrong in some way? Of course, the answer is no. Uh, and, and I'll show you uh, why that's not the case. Uh, and in order to show that, I, I'd like to think about a, a bilayer system, uh, one third minus one third, where now the edges are all coupled to a superconductor. So I have only a single region. Okay, it's all superconducting, both uh, in, the, uh, in the exterior and in the interior. Okay, and I'm doing this trick of making it thinner and thinner and thinner. And I'm asking what's going to happen. So, so uh, uh, is this, uh, uh, do I have you with me or do I lose you? Uh, fine, we're fine. We were talking uh, yesterday, uh, a few of the teachers here, of how hard it is to gauge the, the uh, response of the, the audience, not necessarily in this school, but everywhere, uh, uh, everywhere where we teach. <laughs> Uh, so so, so uh, I'm doing a beginner's uh, mistake. I'm asking you, is it okay? But still, <laughs> uh, this, this school is actually pretty active. So, so uh, stop me if, if I'm losing you. So, 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 uh, so, so uh, uh, yeah, my color codes uh, are not very consistent. So this is one third, and this is minus one third. Okay? Uh, the, 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 upper disc, the upper annulus is uh, one third. The lower annulus, annulus is minus one third. So I have counter propagating edges at the exterior. I have counter propagating edges at the interior. And I'm coupling them to one another, the exterior ones. I couple only with superconductivity now. Not in an alternating way, but superconducting everywhere. And the interior one as well, superconducting everywhere. So what did I do? It's, uh, you know, if I coupled them by, by backscattering, in some sense I formed the torus. Right? Uh, if, if I stitch these two edges to one another and stitch these two edges to one another, I form a torus. Uh, now here I form it, uh, and you know, a torus you can put in your car and drive with, uh, make it a tire. Uh, here I'm giving you a very strange tire. The, it's the, the two halves, the two uh, annuli are stitched to one another, but they're stitched by a superconductor, okay? So, so, so now, uh, the, uh, 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 this torus has a ground state degeneracy. But the ground state degeneracy is not a uh, sixfold, as we had for each superconducting segment, but it's threefold. And the reason is uh, that this, this edge can have uh, the, the, the relative charge of the, of the two uh, edge states here can be either zero two-thirds or four-thirds. I mean, I can have either zero here and zero here, one-third here and one-third here, two-thirds here and two-thirds here. This way, uh, 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 those two ground states will be degenerate and the same on the other side. Now, the key point for removing, so, so, so now I can ask, I won't get into the details because I'd like also to talk about the five half state. But, but uh, so, so let me skip the mathematics and tell you uh, uh, what happened. So, uh, I have these two annuli. One, the external, external edge in the outside is gapped by a superconductor. The internal edge on the, outside, in the, on the inside is gapped by, by a superconductor. And now I make the two edges get closer to one another. I'm trying to make it, to make the system one dimensional. Okay, now those two edges, the internal and the external, now they're getting close to one another. Tunneling can take place, but not, not tunneling of uh, single electrons or single quasi-particles, only tunneling of pairs. Th think about the case where I had nu equals plus one and nu equals minus one, so nothing fractional. So I have a superconductor in the inside, a superconductor on the outside. I basically have a Josephson junction between the inside and the outside. A single electron cannot cross because the, the, the superconductor cannot accommodate a single electron. It can accommodate only even number of charges. So for nu equals plus one, uh, for nu equals one, the only thing that can tunnel are single, uh, uh, are Cooper pairs. Single electrons cannot tunnel. And for one third, the only thing that can tunnel are pairs of quasi-particles. 
So when I do, when I, when I get the two edges close to one another, I will remove the degeneracy. I had the degeneracy between zero, two thirds, and four thirds. I will remove that degeneracy. But I will not remove the, ge the degeneracy in the case that I was talking about here. Uh, I can have tunneling, uh, I can have tunneling between the zero modes here and the zero modes here, but that one I eliminated by keeping them uh, very far away from one another. But I can also have tunneling uh, between the superconducting regions, but that, uh, that type of tunneling must involve pairs of quasi-particles, not single quasi-particles. So I had initially the degeneracy for this superconducting segment, the degeneracy between 0, 1 third, 2 thirds, 1 4 thirds, and 5 thirds. I will lose the degeneracy between 0, 2 thirds, and 4 thirds, lose the degeneracy between 1, 5 thirds, and 1 thirds, but I will keep the, the degeneracy between the ground state here and the ground state here. So I will keep the Majorana degeneracy, but lose every other uh, power fermionic degeneracy. Because I cannot eliminate tunneling, that's not a zero mode to zero mode tunneling. It's a, a domain to domain tunneling. It's a superconducting segment to superconducting segment tunneling. Okay, so this is how you see that in one dimension, uh, you cannot have more sophisticated uh, or, or generic more sophisticated non-abelian defects other than Majorana fermion. Uh, well, that's next. <laughs> <laughs> but I should say, uh, any fra uh, you know, think about any fraction, quantum whole state. If you make it too thin, the two edges start talking to one another. And, and eventually you lose, you lose the quantum whole state. Okay? Uh, but, but let's talk about it in, in a second. Uh, so, so, so this is a, a, you know, the, the virtue of two dimension. You can have the anions which just disappear as you go down to one dimension. Well, you can, you can have remnants of them, but, only, but not, not protected, not topologically protected, just in, in the same way that if you have new equals one edge states moving counter propagating to one another and you make the 2D thinner and thinner and thinner until it becomes a wire, then you know for a wire you can have counter propagating uh, electrons, left movers and right movers which do not scatter to one another, but you need to have a, ver a, a perfectly clean wire. The, the, the virtue of two dimensions is that you can separate those edges and then Cleanliness becomes uh, far less important. Okay? Uh, so in the few minutes I have, uh, well, the, t the summary that my one fermions, only my one fermions survive the transition to one dimension. Uh, in, the, in the few minutes I have, I'd like to talk about uh, the non-abelian quantum world state and I'll focus about five halves. So first, someone was asking me uh, uh, over, over the break, um, What's the difference between uh, um, non-abelian abelian systems uh, such as uh, um, uh, 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 such as the 1D topological superconductors we talked about so much, and non-abelian uh, uh, systems uh, such as new equals five halves? So there's no way I can make better than Jason's brilliant uh, uh, answer yesterday that calling a Majorana fermion in a 1D topological superconductor in Ising anion is like calli calling an engine a car. Um, uh, uh, but I'll try to phrase it in, in, a, in, in a different way. Uh, so, uh, okay. Um, first of all, l let's start by thinking about nucleus five halves. Okay, just as a, a, as a, a, a Fractional quantum world state. It's observed. Uh, uh, you see a plateau, the whole resistivity, energy gap. It's a quantum world state like all quantum world states. So let's try and analyze it. Uh, we, we hardly talked about uh, analyzing quantum world states here at all. So I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words about that. Uh, so, you know, first there is a, this was confirmed in a numerical calculation that five halves is in fact two plus one half. Uh, <laughs> 
So, so uh, and this was a classical numerical calculation. Uh, but Google can probably check that. Uh, so, so uh, you know, a, a quantum wall state of five halves is just two field lambda levels and one half field. So let's forget about the two field ones; uh, they are inert, and think about the a half field one. Uh, how how do we understand the new equals uh, one half? So, so here's something I'm going to say in really two sentences. Uh, there is a way; it's called the Chern-Simons or flux attachment transformation to map the uh, nucleus one-half state onto a, a, a state of different fermions called composite fermions, not electrons, but still fermions, uh, at zero average magnetic field. So composite fermions are uh, electrons to which you attach two flux quanta. How many of you are familiar with the concept? Like uh, about half. Uh, so, so, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm saying it very, uh, uh, you know, uh, quickly. I'll again recommend our course for that. Um, so so uh, it's a mapping that maps electrons at half-field Landau level onto composite fermions at zero magnetic field. And the good thing about that, that's the philosophy of physics. I'm sure you found this out before. If you have a problem you don't know to solve, you try to map it onto a problem you do know how to solve. We know how to solve the problem of uh, fermions at zero average magnetic field, and these particular ones are spin polarized. Uh, and the solution is uh, among uh, the, the several possible phases. One of them is superconductivity. And you know even which superconductivity. If the fermions are spin polarized, the, super, the most natural superconductivity to think about is a P wave superconductivity. So, uh, 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 this set of mappings uh, or this set of uh, uh, steps maps the problem of nucleus five halves to the problem of composite fermions at zero magnetic field that form a PX plus IPY superconductor. But that is a, a topological superconductor. So, a two, uh, uh, you know, PX plus IPY superconductor is topological. So, the vortices will carry zero mode, just as we saw in the previous uh, talk. So, so we'll have uh, vortices, which are vortices of the superconductor of composite fermions, uh, and they'll carry zero mode. Now, what is the difference between this superconductor and the superconductor that video was talking about, where the vortices are classical degrees of freedom, which you control with a magnetic field, and they carry Majorana modes, the engine of the car of, of Jason's uh, uh, um, metaphor. Uh, so, so what's the difference? The difference is that those composite fermions, as, as we said, they carry two flux quanta on their backs. So they interact with the flux quanta of one another. Or to say differently, they interact with another gauge field. The, the composite, the, the uh, uh, so a P wave superconductor that the uh, uh, video was talking about is a uh, Ele electrons in a quadratic Hamiltonian, uh, BDG Hamiltonian. Here you have composite fermions that interact with an extra gauge field, and that makes the difference. That is, is what, uh, just one thing, uh, that is what makes uh, uh, the vortices in the five half state genuinely quantum mechanical degrees of freedom. There will be excitations that. Uh, uh, will come out as intrinsic degrees of freedom in the Hamiltonian, not as parameters in the Hamiltonian. Yes. 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 So the, uh, w what about the phase mode? That's what you're asking. <laughs> or, or, or maybe that's not what you're asking. What you're asking is what about the infinite conductivity? Yes. It's a superconductor after all. So, so, so it's, the ga it's this gauge field uh, that makes it into um, form a superconductor insu into an insulator. Remember, a superconductor has O x x equals zero. A quantum Hall state has O x O x x equals zero. The difference is in sigma x x. A sigma x x is one over O x x only in the absence of the Hall effect. So, uh, so that's that's the source of difference. I, I can show you l uh, more later. Yes. So it's the reason that you get PX, PX plus IP because you for the final vessel breaking you, you, because the quantum mechanics is zero, right? So you need to have this more fancy final vessel breaking for mathematical reasons. 
So, yeah, so, so you're asking why, don't, why not PX? Yeah. Uh, okay, this, uh, this, this transformation, the, the transformation transformation, doesn't take a time a reversal broken system and make it into time reversal symmetric system. So there's still breaking of time reversal because of this flux mode. Uh, now you can ask uh, why preferring PX plus IPY over PX minus IPY. That, that makes, that, that uh, is too complicated for me to go in this. And I can show you later, okay. Uh, other questions? Uh, so, so uh, uh, now if you have vortices in this uh, uh, superconductor of, uh, of fermion that interacts with an extra gauge field, uh, it will have Majorana mode. There will be, uh, you know, you'll solve the Bogolub of the Jan equations, you'll get Majorana mode. And as you move m these modes around, you remember uh, Jason telling you yesterday about these transformations. This is when you take one around the other. Uh, everything of this will happen. What I'd like to do in my last uh, five minutes, Maya? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll make it three. Uh, I'll, 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 uh, uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, to what extent do we know that uh, a nucleus five half state is non abelian? Other than really, really hoping that this is the case because of uh, the, the you know, exciting aspects of non abelian physics, how do we know? Uh, um, numerically, the, there's lots of evidence which I'm not going to cover, but uh, it's a pretty strong evidence uh, uh, numerically that the fiber state is non-abelian. But uh, uh, experimentally, there are two types of experiments that uh, uh, I'd, I'll cover really uh, uh, telegraphically. Uh, one is you measure the uh, thermal hole conductance. So hole conductance is the, the name of the game of quantum hole experimentalists, but you need to measure the thermal hole conductance. And it turns out the thermal hole conductance is quantized, and, and it's quantized in the in uh, the proper units, T over H bar times something, uh, a, a, and it's half quantized only for a non-abelian five-half state, or or to say differently, it's fractionally quantized only to non for non-abelian states. So if you measure that and found a, a fractional value, you identify the state as a non-abelian. And the Heiblung group, uh, Heiblung's group in, in, at Weizmann carried out an experiment which I'll really show you uh, super telegraphically. And uh, the other type of inter experiment that you can do is uh, interference. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that goes s most straightforwardly into the uh, uh, braiding of one quasi-particle or another. And there's data by, by Bob Willett's group uh, from uh, uh, what used to be Bell Labs, and now I think is, uh, belongs to Nokia, maybe. Uh, uh, um, and that's a um, very, very difficult experiment where data gets better with time, but still leaves uh, some room uh, for, for better data. Uh, so so uh, this is how you measure a, a thermal oil conductance. You have one hot side, one cold side, and you measure the heat current. It's not easy to measure the heat current uh, it's not easy to know what the temperature he here and what the temperature here. Um, well, I shouldn't get into this, right? Uh, <laughs> you, sh you should have seen my other expression. Uh, so so uh, I won't. Uh, I'll just say uh, this is the measurement uh, and this is the measured heat conductance as a function of temperature. Uh, the, the fractional value is 2.5, and you see it's more or less a 2.5 between 22 millikelvin to 14 millikelvin. Um, it deviates as the temperature goes uh, down. Uh, it's a enc very encouraging uh, piece of evidence. There, there, there's, there are follow-up experiments which are also very encouraging. I think we have strong, strong evidence. I'll, I'll probably conclude with that. I think we have strong evidence for uh, the five-half state uh, being a, a non-abelian state, but, but it's a handful set of experiments, both interference and this, and we 
desperately need more than that, maybe also in graphene. So far, it's all in gallium arsenide. Uh, and there, there's an issue of, uh, okay, let me skip this. Uh, th there's an issue of uh, uh, the fraction being fraction, but not the fraction that numerics tells you it should be, uh, and that's an interesting aspect of itself, which I won't get into. So to summarize my, my uh, uh, two hours and, and get us uh, uh, closer to lunch, I'll, I, I, I uh, uh, told you about, uh, I told you about a, a new setup for 1D topological superconductors, uh, and, but basically about this approach of uh, uh, phase-only uh, control. Uh, then we talked about power fermions uh, as the combination of fraction quantum world states plus superconductors, and, uh, uh, and then we talked about uh, uh, non-abelian fraction quantum world states. I should say, uh, m maybe the, the bottom line of all of this is, uh, uh, I think that non-abelian uh, physics is amazingly beautiful. It's, really, it's very, very beautiful. It's very, very promising. It's uh, uh, quite hard theoretically, but that's nothing compared to how, did, how hard it is experimentally. Uh, <laughs> so it's not for the faint-hearted, but still I'd like to uh, encourage you to think about it and either make it easy or face the difficulties. Thank you very much. What advantages yeah. are you asking? Uh, so, first, that's not on the scale or on the axis of advantage, but that's very, it's a very interesting, different type of excitation that we'd love to just, you know, yeah, experiment with. With respect to topological quantum With respect to topological quantum computation, there are um, unitary transformations that you can do with a power fermions, which you cannot do with marijuana, so the set is richer, it's still not universal. But you can, uh, uh, um, in fantasy land, you can construct a, a genuinely non-abelian state of matter um, by coupling all kinds of, uh, all kinds of fermion power fermionic couplings. I won't get into details, but uh, there's a paper, uh, there, there, there are possibilities of doing that, okay? Okay, thank you.